And what we did is we covered it historically. We looked at uh, um, verses, what, 26 through 39, and just looked at the incident itself, what took place. And when we did that, we kind of kept dividing it up into different sections. There was first uh, the man himself that had devils in him, and then, uh, then the devils themselves show up in the, in the narrative, and then, uh, and then the swine, the deal with the swine. I think I missed one up uh, there. And then, uh, then finally it returns back to the man now that the, that the devils uh, have been, uh, the possession has been taken care of, and then the man wanted to follow the Lord, but the Lord left him behind to be a testimony to the people of that country. Oh, that was the other. The people of that country came out after the swine drowned themselves. Now we're gonna go over some of those issues again because we went and looked at it historically and then I said, now we need to realize that if this happened, there's a spiritual lesson for the nation of Israel in this. And so we started covering some of those spiritual lessons and then I said, we're gonna go back through it after that and, and look at it, uh, just pick out some things that we can learn about what it means to about the devils, the evil spirits, the unclean spirits, and, uh, and learn some, some things about them because they do exist. And this passage of scripture has a lot to teach us about them. Not everything, but it has a lot. And so I thought, well, we, we'll cover some of the details that we can glean from this passage about them. And, and so we're gonna finish the spiritual lessons and then, and then glean those uh, truths about uh, unclean spirits uh, that are here in the passage. So let me just start out in verse 30. Yeah, verses 26 through 29 introduces the man. Uh, we call him the maniac. He's man-possessed, and we'll, we'll talk about some of the things about uh, what the, the devils in him caused him to do. But then, then as the Lord confronts him, the devils, and they were, they, their name was Legion because there were a, a whole legion in him, and which is anywhere from three, but probably 6,000, uh, devils inside this man. And, and now the Lord is going to deal with them. So we begin in verse 30. And it says, And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they, they besought him, the Lord, they, the, the devils besought the Lord, that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there were, uh, and there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountains, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place uh, into the lake and were choked. And, when they, uh, and when, th when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Now we'll pick up and read the, re the rest of that in just a little bit, but that's enough there to get us started. Um, and one of, the, one of the things is, is we, the incident takes place. Uh, the devils are cast out of the man. But when we start talking about spiritual lessons, we realize that they're preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And we looked at the verses last time, and, and this is just a quick review, uh, that the Lord promised that he was going to rid the, the land of unclean spirits. The other thing is, is because there is the, they're preaching the gospel of the kingdom, Jesus Christ came to establish his kingdom here on earth, that the devils are here on earth. There is a spiritual battle going on, not just between Jesus Christ trying to present himself to the nation of Israel for their acceptance of him, but there is a demonic force fighting against that. And those devils are there in that land fighting for that land because that land is important to God. And, uh, and so that's why we see them there and there's a battle. And that that battle not only was going taking place in the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, it will continue and culminate in the tribulation. And I reminded you last time that that tribulation that we call the tribulation, the the 70th week of Daniel, the seven years before Christ actually sets up his kingdom on earth, uh, that, that that battle between God and Satan is going to be here on earth and will be accelerating in the sense that when you get to Revelation chapter 12, Satan and his angels are cast out of heaven into the earth. And then Satan starts fighting in the earth against Jesus Christ and, and against his kingdom as he becomes, he indwells the Antichrist and tries to get the world to follow him, even to the approach of Armageddon, 
where the kings of the earth go out against Jesus Christ to try to prevent him from coming back to reign. So that's just some information so that you'd realize there is no thought of a dispensation of grace interrupting uh, between the first coming of Christ and the second coming of Christ by thousands of years. There is, the Lord's going to be speaking in, in verses coming ahead in just a couple chap, just a chapter actually, that he's going to be telling him he's going to die when he gets to Jerusalem. Um, but, the, but at the same time, the, the battle between God and Satan that's going on here will continue in that tribulation, which was the next prophetic event for the nation of Israel. Now, one of the things that we did see last time, and I took you back there, so yeah, I'm not going to have you turn again, but we went to Mark chapter 5 and verse 10. Because there, when, when the, the, when the uh, devils asked the Lord that they might go into the swine. Oh, by the way, uh, 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 Dave uh, Smith came in afterwards. He was in the back. But he, he reminded us that in Mark, in I think it's verse, chapter 5, verse 13, tells us there was 2,000. We were wondering how many were in this herd of swine. And... and in past studies, I did teach it, <laughs> just forgot it was there, that there were 2,000. There, so there's like 6,000 uh, devils in this man, and they invade the swine. But the point is, is when the swine asked uh, not to be thrown into the, cast into the deep, they said, or cast out of the country. They wanted to stay in the country. And when the Bible says the Lord suffered them, he allowed them. They not only entered into the swine, but the question then, did they leave the country? Because as you read, the, the swine runs down, down the hill and off a cliff and are choked into the water. Um, but we went back to Matthew, and I, I want to show you this. Matthew chapter 12 is kind of where we ended last time. But there's another reason for me to show you this now. Matthew chapter 12. The question is, when the hogs were, were choked... Where did the swine go? Or where did the, the devils go? Not the swine. Where did the devils go? And, uh, and you know, the, we don't really know. There, I do probably would suggest two different answers. Uh, but this is quite interesting, where it says in Matthew chapter 12, in verse 43, the Lord says, When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Now, the reason I'm rereading it last week, because we did end here talking about what, 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 where would the swine go. Uh, but here I want you to recognize they walk around in dry places. That is interesting. Where'd the swine go? They went down into the lake, <laughs> the Sea of Galilee there, and, and were drowned and choked in, in that sea. But the unclean spirits, they walk through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Then he saith, I will return unto the house from whence I came out. And when he was come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. And, and the Lord is answering this because this is the passage where they're saying he's casting out devils by Beelzebub. So the Lord is casting out devils. And, uh, and so he's telling, warning them that if he casts out a devil and the devils then walk around dry places and can't find a place to go, they want to return back to where they came from. And if they find it, you know, empty, swept, and garnished, the Lord is offering those that, that follow him, when he removes the, the evil spirits from them, there's going to be an opportunity with the, for the Holy Spirit to come to them, as John the Baptist warned, he baptizes water, but Jesus Christ is going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. So those that, that don't make a decision for Jesus Christ, they're going to find it empty, swept, and garnished. Verse 45, Then goeth he, and taketh with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. So the Lord is cleansing the land, and they're going to reject him, and the tribulation is going to come, and Satan and his angels are going to be cast out, and it's going to be even more devils that are going to be in that land fighting in control, for control uh, as Jesus Christ is going to come back to claim that land and that nation as his and set up his kingdom on this earth. So you, you see the, the incidences that are taking place there in, in that little incident, that little statement about dry places. You might keep that in mind. Um, so then other spiritual lessons that we want to talk about from Luke chapter 8. 
is the Jews that were living, and by the way, I, I said, remember, they wanted to stay in that country. Well, if they did stay in that country, <laughs> that country, those people are going to ask the Lord to leave. In fact, let's read it now, Luke chapter 8, and in verse 34, the people who, the men who, who fed the swine went and told in the city and in the country uh, what had taken place. So verse 35 says, then went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They also which saw it told them by what means this was uh, this uh, that was possessed with the devil was healed. So they see the man healed, and then these people are saying, it's because Jesus cast out the devils out of this man. So then, verse 37, the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him, besought the Lord, to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear, and, and he went up into the ship, and return, uh, and, and return back again, that is, back to the other side of Galilee. Now before he leaves, verse 38 and 39, uh, the man wanted to go with him, and the Lord told him in verse 39, return to thine house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way, and published throughout the whole city how great things God, Jesus, had done unto him. <laughs> He said, go report what God has done to you. So he went and reported what God has done to him. He talked about Je what Jesus had done to him. You see the deity of Christ there. But the, the point is that man is left there to be a testimony, which is part of, of the spiritual lessons for the nation of Israel. So um, those we, we pointed out last time that the, the, if the Lord was only sent but the lost sheep of the house of Israel, these were Jews that have come out from this country and had asked the Lord to leave. And that's important because the Jews here are picking the swine over the Lord Jesus Christ. They're asking the Lord Jesus Christ to, to leave. And uh, so the ones raising the swine, think about what they're doing. They're raising the swine, but they're probably not eating the swine as they are probably at least uh, enough orthodox of a Jew that they don't eat the swine. The, the most probability is they're raising swine to sell to the Gentiles. And this is a very lucrative business. And all their swine, 2,000, just fell off, a, jumped off a cliff and drowned themselves. And now these people don't want the Lord to stay there. They just lost all their money. Which is telling you, when we think about the tribulation coming and the decision that's going to have to be made in the tribulation over their finance or over the Lord Jesus, which are they going to choose? Well, these people just chose the swine over the Lord Jesus Christ. They chose their finances over the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and so there, there is a warning here uh, concerning them being able to buy and sell, so to speak. The other is, come, hold your place in Luke 8. Come over to James chapter 2. In verse 17, in Israel's program, it says, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you thee my faith by my works. Their faith will require them to do some things. But verse 19 is what I want you to see. But believe, thou, uh, thou believest there is one God, thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. Uh, so the point is, is that the devils believe here and tremble. So the, de the devils fear the Lord. And you see that all through the narrative there. They're worried about in verse 28, they beseech the Lord uh, that they wouldn't, that not to torment them. He beseeches them not to be, to cast them into the deep. And, and so the devils fear the Lord. But the people here, feared the loss of their money more than they feared the Lord. They see the man clean and they're fearful, but they're afraid of the Lord in the sense that the Lord will take away their lucrative business. And so they feared the wrong thing. 
and and they they don't they didn't fear the Lord they feared the loss of their money and they asked the, the Lord to leave so even the devils know more than these people do when it comes to the proper fear uh, and, and the man left behind was there left behind just like the believing remnant of the nation of Israel will be going through the tribulation as a testimony to those concerning the, the gospel of the kingdom and about the Lord Jesus Christ coming to the kingdom. Remember the gospel of the kingdom is the good news of the kingdom and that it was at hand. Matthew chapter 24, I'm going to read you the verse because it says in verse uh, 14, as it talking about tribulation times and some things that are going to endure, well verse 13 says, but he but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now listen to this. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. So this man is left behind, even though he wanted to follow the Lord, the Lord left him there, left him behind to be a witness. And we saw last time, not only was he a witness to the city that his, his relatives were in, but to the whole country. In fact, I think it was Mark that says that he, all, he went through all Decapolis, which is the whole country south of him, and witnessed to the fact of what Jesus Christ had done for him. And, and just as he was left behind, it's a testimony that the believing remnant of Israel will be left to go through the tribulation. We, the body of Christ, are saved from the wrath to come, but they will go through the tribulation as a, for a testimony to those, a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. So it's a testimony concerning that of the nation of Israel. Now the other thing I want to point out as a spiritual lesson, in verse 37 of Luke 8, Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him, the Lord, to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. And, when he, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. The Lord does not force himself on anyone. He will come, at Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, we've read it a bunch of times already. Behold, during the tribulation, I stand at the door and knock. He that opens the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. So anyone who will receive the Lord, the Lord will come to him. But the Lord won't force himself on anyone. And if they don't want him, like the Lord doesn't argue with them, and what are you doing? He just, they asked him to leave and he just gets in the ship and leaves which tells you the Lord is not a Calvinist. <laughs> he, he, he doesn't force himself on anyone. Those who receive him, he comes to, and those who don't want him, he'll leave them, and they'll be faced with the judgment of eternal life apart from fellowship with God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and they'll, we'll see some of what they're going to experience as we talk about these things that we can see concerning devils. So, as now we, we're going to now go look at some of the same verses again, but only for the point of talking about the devils. Now, for instance, uh, I told you that, it, that there's different references uh, concerning devils. In, in verse 27 of Luke 8, it says, and he went forth, speaking about this man, he went forth uh, to the, no, the Lord, and when he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils. So there's devils there. But when you get down to verse 29, as the Lord is dealing with those devils, it says, for he commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man. So devils are unclean spirits. Look at chapter 8 and verse 2. Well, I might as well read, yeah, verse 2. It says, and certain women which had been healed, a certain and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went, out, uh, went seven devils. Notice in that verse, evil spirits are called devils. Evil spirits, devils, unclean spirits, they're all the same. They're, they're used interchangeably. I say that to you, just, I don't know, I, I think I've mentioned it to you before. Uh, I was intrigued by someone brought to my attention that they believed there was, some, there was a difference between devils and unclean spirits. And what they explained to me is in the time of Noah, when giants were on the earth that were a product of, of angelic beings and, and the daughters of men, that those giants that were in the earth that died in the flood, they, had, they were the, 
They're spirits. They're not human. They were unclean spirits. And even though the physical giants died in the flood, the unclean spirits are still here. The devils would have been the fallen angels that we would call refer to. And so they would think that the devils are fallen angelic creatures and that unclean spirits are those back in Noah's day that walked the earth. And I thought, boy, that's intriguing because, you know, the Bible I see, sometimes they're called devils and then other times there's unclean spirits. So I ran the verses on all of them and found just what we just see in Luke chapter 8, the interchanging. They're, they're really the same. So that I would say that evil spirits, unclean spirits, and devils are the same beings and that they, I would refer to them as the fallen angels. And that's especially the, the term devils that is used for that. I, just because that comes around, and I'm sure there's going to be people that disagree with that, but that's what I find in, in searching out those terms. Um, but the other thing is, is it's interesting what the devils inside a man, the, the, uh, the lewd and bizarre behavior. I mean, when you read, read about this man, it says uh, he had devils uh, at the end of verse 27, which had devils long time and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in tombs. Now, there's going to be several, come to Mark chapter 5, because, and the re, I started to say, there's going to be several references, references in Mark that add a little bit of insight. So you might put a piece of paper there in Mark so that you can just look at the different expressions. Because in Mark chapter 5, it adds some other information concerning the, the, what the devils do to this man. Mark chapter 5, verse 5 says, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, Cutting, uh, crying, and cutting himself with stones. So not only is he running around the tombs naked, but he's also crying, he, he's screaming, and he's cutting himself. And, uh, and you, you know that if you read more about those that are possessed with devils, sometimes they throw themselves into a fire and all kinds of other things, so that those devils really cause a lot of bizarre behavior in, in a person. Um, one of the things, and I, I just say this to you, that, that we were making the point last week when we were talking about the spiritual lessons and why there was so much demonic activity in the land of Israel is because that was the focus of the battle between God and Satan at the time. The battle between God and Satan today is the high places. The body of Christ is saved to sit with Christ in heavenly places. And that's why we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in, uh, in high places. Our battle is with Satan, and Satan's not down here on earth. He's in the heavens, and, and our battle is against him and his forces. I, I say that to you because a lot of, I, I don't have an answer to demon possession, how much that is. There is a such thing as, as people who are, there's a difference between possession, a devil entering into a person and that's why I get a kick out of later, he comes, the, the devils come out of the man and into the swine. Now that's possession. But there is demonic influence all about us. Satan is the god of this world. And there is all kinds of influences about us. And, and when we talk about that, just the very fact that they are real tells you, like we did a study, I looked at uh, Bill because he asked a question we de dealt with in Sunday school uh, about, about uh, his question was about reading things, but we talked about those that get involved in, in all the, uh, the spiritual seances and, and all of that, and how the Bible warns against that. And the reason it warns against that, they're real. Uh, you're not just, you're, when people are playing those games, sometimes they just think it's fun, a Ouija board or something like that, but they, there are real beings out there, spiritual beings, and you are playing around with something you, that are more powerful than you. And, uh, and, and I do believe that it takes, it takes acceptance, just like we have to receive the Lord. I think there is a recep reception of demonic spirits. And that's just beyond what I was going to talk about. But I just wanted to give you the warning that these are real and they're nothing to play with. I say that because we are talking last week where uh, I... Someone <laughs> went to a Bible study last week teaching Luke chapter 8 and talking about how we have power over unclean spirits. We do. 
that we can do that. Look at, look at Luke chapter 9. And it says in verse 1, it says, then he, then he called unto him his twelve disciples, called his twelve disciples together, and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Did he give everybody that ever followed? Now remember, he's got a whole bunch of people following him. Who had the power over the devils? The twelve apostles. They were given the power. And every, there's several places that you're going to read about that. And for some people to think that, oh, you're a believer today, you got power over unclean spirits or devils, and so people go around trying to cast out devils, they don't know what they're in for. Now, they're lost people, but <laughs> Acts chapter 19, the, son, the seven sons of Sceva, they were exorcists, but they were non-believers. But they saw Paul casting out devils, so they thought they'd try it. They had a man that was demon-possessed, and, and they went to cast out the devils, and the devil said to them, Jesus we know, Paul we know, but who are you? And they came out of the man and ran on those seven sons of Sceva and, and afflicted them because they thought they had power they don't have. And for our people today to think they have power that they don't have, uh, they're mess it's, you might as well mess around with a Ouija board. It's about the same difference. Uh, all you do with someone that you think might be demon-possessed the way to unpossess them is give them the gospel, get them saved, and let the Holy Spirit come in. And uh, that's, the only, that's the only remedy we have. But even still, we don't know if someone, you know, got a mental inst problem, if they're demon-possessed, uh, if they're on drugs. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, we, we don't get involved in, in all those things. And, and there, if, if Paul's epistles told us, here's how you deal with demons in your assembly, then we'd have a passage. But there's no passage like that. So there's, there's nothing for us to do except for preach the gospel, and that's what we're assigned to do. Um, so we better move on here. Um, in verse 28, back in Luke chapter 8, verse 28, and when he saw Jesus, now it's talking about him, but when he called, saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. And the reason that, that he cried that, verse 29 tells you, for he had commanded the unclean spirits to come out. So it's really those unclean spirits that were saying this. And those unclean spirits know who Jesus Christ is. If you're holding Mark chapter 5, look at verse 7. It says, And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. They don't just ask not to be tormented. They try to use the authority of God the Father over the Lord Jesus Christ not to be tormented. And part of that reason, as you're going to see as it go on, that they understand they are going to get tormented. But they understand, too, some of the timing of that torment. But they also understand that Jesus Christ has subject, subjected himself to God the Father. And they're using that, trying to use that against him, uh, not going to work, but <laughs> they're, they're using that against him. So, but the point is that they know who he is, and they call him the Son of the Most High, and that's who God is. He's the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Uh, in verse 29, where those demons spoke out, that's where you get the idea of the timing. It says in Luke 8, 29, it says, For he had commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man, for oftentimes he caught him and, and was kept, bound with chains and fetters, and he brake the bands and was driven into the wilderness. Uh, no, that's not the verse I wanted. Well, verse 31. And they besought him that he would not command them to go into the deep. So they know they're going to be tormented, and they know the place where they're going to be tormented at. And it's interesting that they, they know these things. But when it talks about, like, where does it say before the time? Is that here or is that another passage? That, that's probably another. Matthew 8, 29, that's where it's at. Matthew 8, 28, yeah. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? It helps if I read the right passage. 
So they, they know they're going to be tormented. They know they're going to be cast into the deep. And they know there's a timing. And when Jesus Christ first coming, they knew it wasn't time. You know when the time is going to come? After the tribulation. When the beast and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire. And, and then Satan is going to join them a thousand years later and they're still going to be in that lake of fire. The, these demons know something about Bible and the timing that God has for them. And so when they see the Lord, they're, they're afraid about being tormented. And even when we talk about torment, uh, do you remember what it's, Revelation chapter 14. When it talks about those that receive the mark of the beast, it says in verse 10, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, <laughs> because he's a th they're actually going to be joining the other angels. They'll, be, they'll be, suffer fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest night or day who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So when they said, torment us before the time, they understand uh, there is a time they're going to be tormented. They're going to be, they're going to be tormented with fire and brimstone forever and ever. They know there's a lake of fire. They even know something about the timing of the lake of fire. Look at Matthew with me at verse 25, or chapter 25. Because here, some people, the Lord is going to take the Gentile nations that did not support the nation of Israel, and, uh, and he's going to say in verse 41, Then shall he say unto them that are on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So that lake of fire is prepared for the devil and his angels, but some humans are going to join the devil and the angels and be tormented. That's what you see, the, both of them are going to be tormented. Verse 46, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So that torment is an everlasting punishment that those that are not going into Christ's kingdom, heaven or earth part of the kingdom, are going to be tormented uh, and punished in that lake of fire forever and ever with the devil and the angels. And, uh, and so those angels know quite a bit about that. Um, the, they broke the, the man broke the chains and all. You talk about bizarre behavior. They can give humans power to break chains. Uh, that amazes me because how come the bones didn't break? <laughs> uh, and so the fetters are probably some kind of metal brace around the feet. Uh, that he was able to break. Uh, when, it, when, it, when they asked the question not to be cast into the deep, now there's some verses here, this probably, I don't think we're going to get much further than this. Uh, when they say the deep, the Greek word for that word deep is, it's act, the Greek word is abyss. It sounds like that, so a lot of times they talk about the abyss. And, and we, it's kind of interesting to me. Where did the swine go uh, uh, when, the, when the devils entered into the swine? The they went down into the deep. And there, these guys asked not to go into the deep. So you wonder what the parallel, what the, there, there's some kind of relationship there, but it's certainly a, not a place they wanted to go, and we can probably deal with that a little bit. But when we talk about the abyss uh, or the deep, where what we're talking about is, is like the depth of the sea, or the term is depthless, <laughs> meaning bottomless. And that's the exact same Greek word that's used in the book of Revelation. Come over to Revelation chapter 9. Because you're going to get some understanding about these, pe these devils know about the deep. That there is this deep place that they're going to be judged at. And... And when you talk about deep, it's deep into the sense that it's bottomless. So when you get to Revelation chapter 9 and verse 1, 
it says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and that would be an angelic being, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and, and so forth. So there is a key to the bottomless pit, and he opens it up, and, and all kinds of things. Well, when it, uh, the smoke comes out of the pit, and it says, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, like unto them uh, that, get, that was given power, as scorpions of the earth have power. And then, if you look at verse 11, it says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. And the, his name in the Hebrew is, is Aba, 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 Abandon, and the, uh, but in the Greek, uh, he hath the name Apollyon. And uh, that, that has to do with uh, a destroyer. And whether you say it in Hebrew, Greek, or English, <laughs> that, but they have a king in that bottomless pit. So those beings are real. And there's a lot said in the book of Revelation about the bottomless pit. Chapter 11, verse 7 says, And when they, had, and when he, uh, and when they shall finish their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them, and, and so forth. Remember I told you there's a lot of sevens in the book of Revelation? Guess how many times bottomless pit shows up in the book of Revelation? <laughs> Seven times. So anyway, I read those to you because there's a couple other things that I want to give your attention to. You, you, just for time's sake, Deuteronomy 32, 22. The, 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 the Lord is warning, and it's really about Pharaoh, and it's, it's a warning about a judgment that's going to come, and, and, and his anger is, is got him in a rage un, uh, to, uh, I don't think it says the word cast. I better read the verse. Tried to save time. Deuteronomy 32, and I just need to verse uh, 22. It says, For the fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn to the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth and her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. The lowest hell. So we, we do know that hell was a place where, where even departed spirits of, of believers went to, called Hades. But then there's a part of hell that's a place of torment where the lost souls go. But then there's a place called the lowest hell. And, and so you realize when we talk about the deep, when you talk about the bottomless pit, when you talk about the lowest hell, in Ezekiel, and again, another passage that's, that's you got, it's, it's figurative, but it talks about the nether parts of the earth. And that's again this, this the, the nether parts of the earth is the, the deepest parts of the earth. Even Paul says that there's going to be a time which all that are in heaven, uh, in heaven and in earth and under the earth, will acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But under the earth, there is, there's places under this earth where demonic beings are. And uh, come over with me to 2 Peter chapter 2. And it says in verse 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. This is speaking about the angels that did sin in the days of Noah. That those angels aren't free to go around and do anything. But he cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness. When it says cast them down to hell, that's a word that's not Hades. That's a word that's called Tartarus. And what we're talking about is the deepest part of hell. The, the, these angels that sinned by coming down and, and leave, leaving their own habitation, that he has them chained in everlasting chains of darkness. But not just with everlasting chains of darkness. Jude says it this way. Jude says, verse 6, it says, The angels which kept not their first estate but left their habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness 
unto the judgment of the great day. So they know there is a day coming <laughs> that they're going to be judged. And some of them are already chained in that deep place waiting for the judgment to come. And they're, un they're not just in darkness, they're under that darkness. And, uh, and so there, there's a lot to demonic things and, and the underworld there. Um, so the, the, the question I just leave you with in thinking about this, when the devils were cast out of the swine, or cast out of the man, and entered into the swine. The swine run into the lake and drown the swine. Was that the devils trying to get work against Jesus Christ, to, to make Israel reject Jesus Christ, so that they went into the swine and then and, and now, like, okay, you, you tried to deal with us, we'll get you back. So they killed the swine, and the people asked the Lord to leave. Or did the Lord let those swine go in and force them to go drown themselves in that deep because he wanted those people to be, make a decision? Me or the swine? And I say that to you because in everything we read here, the devils are always asking the Lord. And he's given, he suffered them. He gave them permission. They're under his authority. And I don't know which way it is. Was it their idea or the Lord's idea? But certainly everything is under the Lord's control. And, and those people made a decision that they would take the swine over him. And what we didn't get to, when, you, when, we, get, when we study Revelation, you'll find out that there are some angels locked in the river Euphrates. You keep wondering about what, what's the situation between devils and water. There's something that's connected there. They ran into the deep, even though they said, don't put us in the deep. And then you find out there's, some, there's four angels that are locked in the river Euphrates. And, uh, and so it's like, like water can capture them or something. And it's just some connection there that seems like a... A, a prison for devils. And just thought I'd just throw that out for you to think about. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you that we can spend most of our time studying about the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, that he is the son of the Most High God. You're the Most High God. And Father, he reigns with you in the heavens and will reign with you throughout eternity as both of you sit on the throne together. And so we thank you that we're part of your eternal kingdom by trusting Jesus Christ as our Savior. But Father, there is not only the humans uh, that we minister today to, but there is a war, spiritual warfare that goes on. There are other beings in the universe, and your Bible tells us things about them that we can spend some time gleaning these truths and knowing they exist. And, uh, and, and so we thank you for the things that we were able to see today in our study. In Christ the Savior's name, we thank you and pray. Amen.